Hey everyone, how's it going? Thanks so much for tuning in. Today, we're gonna to be taking an in-depth look at the 2023 Chevrolet Traverse High Country All-Wheel Drive. As with all of my reviews, I'm gonna cover all of the ins and outs and take this thing on a thorough drive. There's a whole lot of stuff to cover, so without further ado, let's go ahead and start her up and let her run. The current generation Traverse has been around since the 2018 model year, but it was most recently refreshed last year. The freshened exterior includes a new front fascia, new grills, and a new headlamp configuration with standard LED headlamps and daytime running lamps. There's a new roof rail design, new wheel designs, and a new LED tail lamp design. In addition to new connectivity and interior features, there's also new driver assistance features with an expanded portfolio of standard equipment. For 2023, the Traverse is unchanged with the exception of a couple of new colors and leather wrapping on the steering wheel and shift knob on all trims except for the LS. If you're in the market for a three row crossover, you'll have your work cut out for you as there's a lot of options out there. The Traverse offers a larger footprint than some of its competitors, which enables it to offer best-in-class cargo space. It most directly competes against the Kia Telluride, the Hyundai Palisade, Ford Explorer, Subaru Ascent, Honda Pilot, Toyota Highlander, and the GMC Acadia. The latter shares the same platform as the Traverse. This is a packed segment with lots of options to look over. Most offerings in this segment are pretty cut and dry when it comes to powertrain offerings, but something to keep in mind is that if you're looking for an alternative powertrain, like a hybrid for example, you might want to look at the Explorer. If you're looking for a strong value proposition and tons of luxury features usually reserved for more expensive vehicles, the Telluride and Palisade are worth your consideration. The Traverse offers a well-rounded package that can comfortably seat up to 8 people. It has pretty much everything you'd want in a modern people mover. Peppy acceleration, good fuel economy, and a quiet interior. It's offered in six trim levels, including LS, LT Cloth, LT Leather, the Sporty RS, Premier, and the luxurious High Country. Base pricing ranges between $35,915 and $53,395. Front-wheel drive is standard and all-wheel drive is available for an additional cost. Depending on the trim level, that additional cost ranges between $2,000 and $2,600. There's up to six exterior colors to choose from. This example is finished in black cherry metallic, which is a no-cost option. The High Country is very similar to a Premier. They both share many of the same standard features and styling touches. The Premier adds body-colored cladding, dual exhaust outlets with polished rectangular tips, chrome door handles, and chrome roof-mounted side rails. The High Country takes it over the top with its own grille, unique wheels, a dual-panel sunroof, unique upholstery, and a power-split folding third-row seat for added convenience. The Premier and High Country also come standard with a heavy-duty cooling system, which equips the Traverse to trailer up to 5,000 pounds with the included hitch out back. The trailering equipment is optional on the rest of the trims, except for the LS. The total MSRP for what you see here, including destination, is $54,745. The Traverse is available with either 18-inch or 20-inch alloy wheels in a variety of styles depending on the trim level. 20s come standard on the high country. Of course, they're a unique style to further differentiate the trim level. They're wrapped in 255-55 all-season tires. 
As far as the brakes, the Traverse features four-wheel internally ventilated Duralife rotors with electrohydraulic power assistance and ABS. The rotors span 12.64 inches in front and 12.4 inches in the rear. They're clamped down by twin piston and single piston calipers respectively. Stopping from 60 miles an hour takes about 127 feet. The Duralife brake rotors have better resistance to corrosion to increase rotor life, minimize brake pulsation, and improve aesthetic appearance. The rotors feature a corrosion fighting process called ferritic nitrocarburizing, which can double rotor life expectancy and reduce or minimize rust. Piloting the Traverse is an electric variable effort rack and pinion power steering system with active return assist. The turning circle measures 39 feet. Overall steering effort is low, but the system is really precise. Even though this is a larger vehicle, it's easy to pilot, certainly easier than a full-size SUV. Out on the road, I found that the suspension tuning was a good balance between handling and ride comfort. The front suspension consists of a McPherson strut independent setup with hydraulic control arm ride bushings and a hollow stabilizer bar. The rear suspension consists of a five-link independent setup with auxiliary spring aids and a hollow stabilizer bar. Through the corners, body roll is well controlled and whenever you hit bumps in the road, little of that noise transmits into the cabin. Currently, the Traverse is only offered with one engine, a 3.6 liter naturally aspirated V6. It's built using aluminum for the block and heads and features dual overhead camshafts, four valves per cylinder, continuous variable valve timing, direct high pressure fuel injection, and electronic throttle control. It develops 310 horsepower at 6,800 RPM and 266 pound-feet of torque at 2,800 RPM. In my experience, the Traverse can accelerate to 60 miles per hour in about 6.8 seconds. The V6 has plenty of muscle and good usable performance overall for daily driving. It's also really quiet. A silky smooth auto start stop system is standard. It momentarily shuts off the engine when coming to a stop to reduce fuel consumption and emissions. It can also be deactivated by a button in the center console if you prefer. EPA fuel economy estimates range between 17 miles per gallon in the city and 25 miles per gallon on the highway. With front wheel drive, you can expect slightly higher range. In my week of driving, I average 20 miles per gallon on this all wheel drive example. The total tank capacity is 19.4 gallons on front wheel drive models and 21.7 gallons on all wheel drive models. The only transmission available is a 9-speed automatic transmission. It's smooth and quick shifting. If you pull the shifter all the way back to the L position, you can use the toggle button on the side of the shifter to operate the electronic range select feature, which tells the transmission what range of gears to shift between. The available all-wheel drive system is a twin clutch system that continuously and automatically delivers torque to the wheels with the most traction. While engineered specifically for strong performance in wet, snowy, or icy conditions, it also provides enhanced stability in dry weather. The system is capable of transferring up to 100% of the available torque to either the front or the rear axle. The all-wheel drive system is driver controlled and can be disconnected by a dial in the center console for improved fuel efficiency. There's also an off-road mode for rougher terrain and a tow-haul mode for towing heavier loads or pulling a trailer.
The interior of the Traverse is straightforward and functional, and there's a lot of different flavors between the more basic accommodations of the LS and LT cloth to the sporty RS and the luxurious-minded Premier and High Country. The LT leather trim slots right in the middle and includes a number of upgraded features, in addition to leather upholstery over the standard cloth. It's probably the best value of the lineup. With the RS, you also get leather, but there's red accent stitching throughout the interior. The Premier and High Country, in addition to standard heated front seats, which are also included on some of the other trim levels, gets ventilated front seats. Therefore, the leather is perforated. The Premier is available with three different interior colors. The High Country is only offered with one exclusive two-tone theme of jet black and clove with micro suede accents, unique trim finishers on the dash and door panels, and special perforations on the seats. The High Country logo is also embossed on the front headrests. Overall, the seats are quite comfortable. The driver's seat has eight-way power adjustments, including two-way lumbar. The passenger seat has six-way adjustments, as well as two-way lumbar. Manually adjusting front seats are standard on the entry trims. The way the Traverse lineup is structured allows it to have a pretty low starting price, offering more value when looking at sheer versatility. However, when you start getting into the more expensive trims, the value starts to wane a bit. Some of the competitors in this segment offer more high-end interior features, more tech, and more comfort depending on how equipped. Dollar for dollar, if you're wanting top shelf features, it's certainly worth shopping around to see what vehicle works best for you overall. Build quality is great. The interior feels solid and well put together. Some of the additional tech shown here that's not available on entry trims is the larger 8-inch reconfigurable instrument cluster and an 8-inch HD central infotainment system with navigation. The instrument cluster enables easy access to a lot of features, such as a comprehensive driver's information system, audio, navigation, and telephone information, and a couple of display modes that you could switch between depending on your personal preference. The entry trims have either a 3.5 inch or a 4.2 inch driver's information system. An awesome sounding 10 speaker Bose audio system is available on the LT leather and standard on the upper trims. It's a huge step up over the standard 6 speaker system. All of the typical media features are present and accounted for including Sirius XM satellite radio. The infotainment system is awesome, not just because it's simple and easy to use, but it also hides a cubby behind it. There's a button to the right of the audio controls that raises and lowers the screen. The touchscreen itself is capacitive touch, just like a smartphone, so it's very easy to operate and grasp a hold of, unlike some competitive systems out there. Wireless phone charging is standard on most trims. Wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is standard too, along with a 4G LTE Wi-Fi hotspot. Beneath the climate controls are several media inputs and a 12 volt power outlet. A tri-zone climate control system is standard across the board and features easy to use controls. You can also operate the front and rear climate controls through the infotainment system. A couple of additional cool features of this system is the expansive app suite that's built in, so whatever you like to keep up with during the daily routine can be easily looked up. You can also access things like roadside assistance, service scheduling, and the owner's manual. The Traverse comes standard with Chevy Safety Assist, which is a suite of advanced driver assistance systems. The package includes automatic emergency braking, front pedestrian braking, lane keep assist with lane departure warning, following distance indicator, forward collision alert, and IntelliBeam automatic high beam control. Depending on the trim, there's a lot of additional features available as well. Of course, being the top trim level, the high country comes standard with everything, such as rear park assist, lane change alert with side blind zone alert rear cross traffic alert, rear pedestrian alert, safety alert seat, adaptive cruise control, and enhanced automatic emergency braking. 
a rear vision camera is standard, while an HD surround vision camera is available or standard, again depending on the trim level. If equipped, you even get a rear camera mirror, which allows you an unobstructed rear view if you're carrying a load of passengers or cargo. As far as airbags, the Traverse has dual front airbags, a driver inboard seat matted side impact airbag, seat matted side impact airbags for the driver and front passenger, and head curtain airbags for all rows in the outboard seating positions. A few additional standard features include a teen driver, buckle to drive, and a tire pressure monitoring system. The Traverse has the ability to sit up to eight people with the standard bench seat on the LS. All of the other trim levels come standard with second row captain's chairs. Personally, I prefer the captain's chairs because it gives second row passengers their own space and individual armrests. Each seat can be slid back and forth and reclined for added comfort. With the standard tri-zone climate control system, rear seat passengers have a control panel in the back of the center console to operate temperature and fan speed. Of course, there's a variety of adjustable air vents to fully distribute airflow between the second and third rows. On the Premier and High Country, the second row seats are heated. Additional second row amenities include an AC power outlet and two USB outlets for device charging, not to mention overhead LED lighting, grab handles, and coat hooks. The dual Skyscape two-panel power sunroof is optional on certain trim levels and standard on the high country. Unlike some competitors that offer full panoramic roofs, this one is split into two glass panels. The front panel is powered, the rear is fixed. Both have their own sunshades. It's a nice feature that brightens up the interior. Taller folks will have no issue sitting in the second row. I'm 5 foot 10 inches and I had plenty of room to be comfortable. The adjustable seats are a nice touch. They also offer good padding and support for long term comfort. Gaining access to the third row seat is as simple as can be. There's a handle on the sides of the second row seats that, when pulled, allow them to tilt up and slide forward, leaving a good bit of space to hoist yourself up on in. I also really like the step treads the Chevrolet integrated into the floor to make sure you get a good footing on a level surface. While the third row seat is obviously a smaller space, I was still able to sit back there just fine. It's going to be a little tight on leg space for taller folks, but all in all, the Traverse offers an impressive amount of interior space for this segment, giving it a practicality edge over some of its competitors. Third row amenities include overhead LED lighting, air vents, and USB outlets on either side for device charging. The outboard seats have full-size headrests. The only thing you can't do is recline the backrests. All of the seats in the second and third row have child seat anchor points as well. If storage space is high on your priority list, the Traverse definitely delivers. On the LS, the liftgate is manually operated. The rest of the trims have a standard programmable liftgate that can be height adjusted according to personal needs or low ceilings. On the Premier and High Country, a standard hands-free feature is included, which allows you to swipe your foot underneath a sensor to automatically open the liftgate. An illuminated emblem projection is displayed at night so you can more easily see the location of the sensor. It's a particularly useful feature when your arms are full. Behind the third row seat, you have 23 cubic feet of space to work with. There's D-rings on either side of the cargo area for easy securing of items, a 12-volt power outlet on the right side, and overhead LED lighting. Underneath the cargo floor, you have a huge compartment for even greater storage capacity. A High Country exclusive feature is the power folding third row seat which adds some additional convenience by allowing you to lower and raise the third row by a couple of buttons on the right side. When folded, you have 57.8 cubic feet of space to work with. For maximum hauling, fold the second row seats to expand the total usable space to 98.2 cubic feet. There's copious amounts of space through the rest of the interior as well. 
In the front, the center console has a large rearward compartment under the armrest, along with cup holders, side pockets, and a forward tray that houses a standard wireless phone charger on all trims except for the LS. There's two sets of door pockets and a generous glove box too. Second row passengers get lower door panel pockets, seat back pockets, a small tray in the back of the center console, cup holders and additional pockets in the upper door panels. Third row passengers have cup holders and pockets molded into each side panel. Well everyone, that's going to wrap it up for this video. I hope you all enjoyed the in-depth look at the 2023 Chevrolet Traverse. Be sure to stay tuned next time and leave a like down below because it really helps the videos a lot. If you haven't subscribed already, consider doing that too because of course there's always a lot more content where that came from. I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.